What's up everybody, Ricky HD, and today I'm gonna to bring you a video on how exactly a motorcycle makes power. You know, some people ask me, how can a Zippers 124 kit make way more horsepower and torque than a Harley Davidson 131 crate motor? How does this cam relate to this cam and why does this cam have better? So I'm gonna get into all the way that the motor, the, the Harley Davidsons or four stroke motors in general, how they make power. Now, is there anyone out there who wants to go fast? anybody I want to go fast so the first thing let's talk about is the camshaft so here's the camshaft if you look at the camshaft what you're gonna see is you're gonna have lobes here's a lobe here's a lobe and as it turns there's four different lobes that's because inside of the motorcycle you have two exhaust and two intake valves that open and close simultaneously the way that this works is that each cam has a different height so this lobe has a certain height, which is an intake. This one has a certain height that is an exhaust lobe. And what happens is, is that these are the tappets or rollers or um, uh, lifters, whatever you want to call it. These, what they do is they will roll on top. And as this goes up, it'll push this up, which then pushes the push rod. The push rod rolls up. It pushes into the rocker arm and the rocker arm hit the valve that goes down and closes or opens the intake and the exhaust valves. That is what creates the power. So the camshaft is rotating, pushing the push rod into the rocker arm. The rocker arm is pushing down on the valve or opening the valve. In this case, the intake valve is open, but the exhaust valve is closed. As the piston rotates to the bottom or bottom dead center, it sucks and creates a vacuum and allows all the intake air and all the fuel, this is your air fuel ratio mixture, whatever you want to call it, traps it into, uh, into the chamber and then the intake valve will actually close. The intake valves close, the exhaust valves close, this is the compression stroke. It's compressing the air, it's compressing the fuel into the compression until the spark plug, once it gets near top dead center or TDC, ignites, igniting it. So as the spark plugs ignite, that air fuel mixture, what it does is it's not supposed to be exploding. It's supposed to burn very quickly. It ignites it, it burns it, it pushes down on the piston, which then exerts power into the crankshaft, causing that rotation. This is the moment where we are trapping the power out of the fuel that we put in. That's why it's important to put in good fuel. The exhaust and the intake valves are closed until it hits bottom dead center. Once the crank goes down and the pistons at bottom dead center, you'll see the intake valve is closed. Now the exhaust valve is open, forcing out all of that power, all that, that, that combustibility inside the chamber, it forces it out. So this is where the power comes from. And this is why it's important to choose the right exhaust for your application. The more and quickly you can get the exhaust out, the more power you're gonna have, which then creates the more opening and closing of the valves. So now that we're at this state, what this is called is overlap. This is where both valves are closed and it's very important to understand how to get your motorcycle into overlap if you're gonna be doing anything like head work or changing out uh, your, your push rods. Now this is just gonna see it in full action as it goes quickly. So intake, burn, exhaust, power, and that's how it works. So as you can see from that diagram, your choice of intake and the choice of exhaust, obviously stage one is crucial, but the camshaft is where it's gonna make the biggest difference, right? Companies like Screaming Eagle can't go aggressive. They can't go too high on the lobes. They can't go too crazy with the ratios. So that's why they can't create as much power as zippers or SNS, because the faster, as you saw, the faster you can open up and close those valves, not to mention the duration, how long it's open is how long, how much air and how much fuel gets in there, the duration of the exhaust, how quickly it gets out. That is all the main component of how you get power from your motorcycle. With a 124 to 131, what's the difference? Yes, you have a bigger chamber or the bigger jug, the bigger piston, which creates more volume of air and fuel combustibility. So, but what the point I'm trying to make is that the size really doesn't matter. I mean, it does to a certain extent, but when you're comparing, 
you know, a couple cubic inches, it doesn't matter. The biggest thing that matters is how much and how quickly of the air, the fuel, and the, the combustion and the exhaust that you can get out of that motor. That's why a 124 kit from Zippers puts out way more numbers than Harley Davidson's 131 because it's more aggressive all around from the bottom to the top. So I hope this helps. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, as always, please let me know. Leave a comment, share this video with somebody that might wanna see it before they go out and get a 131. I'm not saying the 131 is bad, it's a badass motor. I know a couple guys with 131s, they are gnarly, but they lack, just because they have a 131 does not mean they're gonna be making as much power as these other companies pushing out their kits because they just can't, EPA regulations. So until next time, peace.